what's going on with you guys. Thank you for tapping in with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Cleveland. So uh, happy Sunday. Hope everybody is having a good weekend. Hopefully y'all weekend is cool. As for us out here in Sacramento, it's hot. It is hella hot. So it's, a, it's triple digits out here. It's like 104 outside, 91 in here. I'll be definitely perspiring before this video is over with. But it's a perfect day to come in here and move a fish out of quarantine. Y'all remember we got in quarantine saltwater fish. We have that angel fish that's in quarantine. We got a queen angel fish in quarantine. So that fish been in quarantine for enough, enough time already. So that fish been in quarantine for a few weeks, long enough. Nothing's wrong with it, eats good, ready to get moved. So uh, I got the light on, on the, I can have the light on on this 55 gallon right here. So I think this would be the perfect tank to move the fish into. So currently I have in here a scribbled puffer fish, scribbled dog face puffer fish. I also have a striped puffer fish in here. And then I have a small titan trigger in here. So um, I was gonna move it into the house in a 75 gallon, but you know what, it's gonna have to come back into the fish room. So instead of me taking it inside the house and letting it get comfortable and used to those fish in there and then occupants in that tank, I said, let me go ahead and move it into this 55 gallon because once the fish move out this 55 gallon, all of these fish are gonna move into that 125. And the fish that's in that 125 is gonna get moved over to the 225. So, that being said, I'm going to keep them in the fish room. We're going to move that fish on over here to this 55 gallon. But first, let's go ahead and feed these fish. But before we do, I think I want to introduce you to the fish. Let's do it. All right, so here we are. Check it out. Here's the 55 gallon right here. And we have this beautiful scribble dog face puffer right here. This is definitely one of my favorite puffer fish right here. The only uh, one that I could say probably topping this one, I would say, is the golden puffer. That, that puffer is beautiful. It don't really have all these beautiful markings like this fish right here, but it's definitely one of the cream of the crop when you're talking about puffer fish. And then here is the striped puffer fish. See, it's not a dog face. You see his face? Not quite the same as that one. This one is a dog face. He's winking because I got the light on him. Sorry about that, bud. But, um, but that one's just a regular striped puffer fish. Now, I cannot pick out. Let's see if we can find that trigger fish. It's going to be kind of hard to find him. He is tiny. Can't really find the Titan trigger in here, but he's small. Probably like maybe an inch, inch and a half. But uh, we got to feed these fish before we move the angel fish in here. I don't think they're going to like try to try to attack him or anything like that. But, you know. They hungry. Look at him. And he's acting like that because I pulled out the krill. I told you fish are smart. Look at that. He see the, he see the krill and he gets animated. I think it's pretty funny. But let's go ahead and feed him real quick. I'll back y'all up. There we go. So they eat clams, krill, shrimp, you know, all the good stuff. They're not really, not really that picky. There we go. Put a little bit more. There we go. Look at him. Look at that. And I'll try to keep the light up out of the, uh, I'll try to make sure the light and the glare is not blinding you so you could actually watch them eat and not just watch the light. Yeah. Look at him. Beautiful. There go the Titan Trigger. Come out for food, don't you? All right, let's go ahead and put some more in there because it looks like they almost got it all knocked down. But like I said, that little trigger fish is small. He's ready for some more. Let's get some more in there then. There we go. Bam. Look at that. See how I do that so y'all not getting that light? Y'all not able to see everything, but that's still pretty, pretty good considering but yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite puffer fish, man. This one is a really, really beautiful puffer. I buy this thing 10 times over. The price tag matches the beauty of it, but it is what it is. You gotta pay for what you want. And uh, when things look this good, sometimes you just gotta pay. Hurry up and pay. Hurry up and buy. Hurry up and buy. But yeah, so uh, while these guys are eating, let's go ahead and take a look at Matter of fact, I know y'all still want to see a little bit more of that. But I was about to walk y'all on over there to the angelfish. I guess we'll do that in just a second. 
So we have a total of three puffers. We have these two right here, and then I have the Stars and Stripes puffer. I know y'all remember that guy, Hollywood. But let's go take a look at the angelfish. All right, so look at this little beautiful fish right here. So this is the angelfish that's getting moved out and getting upgraded from this 20 gallon quarantine tank. And y'all, it's being quarantined with this sponge filter. So that's how hard it is to keep saltwater fish, y'all. You got to keep them with a sponge filter. Difficult, right? Not at all. I hope you seeing this will make anyone that's scared or nervous about getting into the saltwater hobby. I hope this right here will just make you just say, you know what? I got this. Because you know what? Y'all do got it. Y'all really do. Now, it took some time and some understanding and some years and some and some studying and and and, and research and trial and error and heartache and tears and it took everything to get to the point to where I feel confident enough to keep my saltwater fish in a tank that just have a sponge filter. I went through all the gadgets, but you know what? When you have a quarantine tank and a little bit of an understanding and a sponge filter, and y'all watch my videos, <laughs> this is possible. It's definitely possible. I don't care what nobody say. Look at this. Look at this guy. Healthy. Looking good, right? Okay, then. Just starting out, though, you might want to do a little bit more. You might want to have a sump. You might want to have a skimmer. You might want to have the auto top off. You might want to have all of that. You might. You might. Or you might not. My goal is to make sure I show all of you all sides of the hobby. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And I definitely want to make things as easy as I can on your pockets. That's the goal. I don't want none of you going broke or spending spending your 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 your, your you know spending that extra money, spending all your extra money, you know, on on, on something like this, on, on saltwater fish, saltwater tanks, saltwater equipment, or any of that. I don't or the hobby in general. I don't want y'all spending all y'all money on a hobby. So I made a lot of mistakes, y'all. I made a lot. And I'm going to continue to make mistakes. We're human. I'm definitely going to continue to make mistakes. But I just want to make sure that I show you what I've learned, whether it's good or bad, and allow you to take from it whatever you can so you guys could get started in the beautiful side of the saltwater hobby. I mean, it's nothing like it. Look at this beautiful fish. You're not really gonna find a freshwater puffer that look like this. You just not, just not. So let's go ahead and acclimate that angelfish and get him into his new 55 gallon saltwater aquarium. All right, so now I'll leave y'all sitting right there because I'm, I'm literally right, right here and y'all don't need to come back and forth with me. So I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to take some of this tank water. I got this nice little container that I got from uh, the Dollar Tree. These are, these are amazing. The Dollar Tree has a lot of different things that y'all could use in the hobby. From these little containers. So if you want to acclimate your fish, you're able to look at them in here up close. You know what I mean? Let's grab them and let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, you ready to eat? I should feed you first, huh? I should definitely feed you first. But you know what? I'll feed you over there. All right, so got a little bit of water, you see? Now let me just go ahead and grab. There you go. Let's go ahead and grab you. One of one of these pipes. That's all good. I got a net big enough to grab the whole pipe. Well, there you go. All right, that was easy, especially with this big net. Okay, so now I got the angelfish. There we go. Quick, easy, and exactly why y'all didn't have to come over here and watch this. So, I know y'all, like I can't believe he got saltwater fish with a, with a sponge filter. Get over it. All right, look, check it out. So this is why I said these nice little cheap containers are dope because just like that, I got them acclimating and uh, 
takes up absolutely no space. So the water temperature is pretty much the same. But what's not the same is the salinity probably. No, the salinity should be the same as well. But there's different water chemistry. Let me cut off the... I'm actually topping it off because of water evaporation. So uh, the water chemistry may be a little bit different. You just never know. The things you can't see. You don't know exactly what's different and what's the same. So that's why I always recommend acclimating whenever you can. I, you, hear, you heard me say whenever you can, right? Because I don't want to try to make it seem like that if you don't do it, it's going to be a, it's absolutely going to be a problem because you never know. It could be, it couldn't be. You never know. But that's why I say whenever you can, acclimate. Just do it. Even if it's quick acclimation. So when I have my fish sitting in like a little container like this, all I want to do is just double the water and volume. Now you can do that two ways. You can do it the way that I'm about to do it right now by taking a little cup and pouring some water in. Or you could go ahead and do a little drip acclimation. I mainly do the drip acclimations for like newer fish. But since this guy came from right over there, it's not going to be a drip. It's just going to be me pouring a little bit of water in here until the water doubles in volume. It looks like already about half. So probably two more, two more cups, and I think that'll be enough. While that's going on, I do have some other things I got to do. While that's going on, I want to go ahead and uh, scoop out some things, right? Get some maintenance done on this tank. I have some things in here that I see that I don't like. Like I might pull out all those clam shells that's been sitting in there for an extended period of time. Bring you in. See all those clam shells? Now you see the clam shells. So let's go ahead and pull some of those clam shells out, as well as some of those little pe little pieces of sponge that literally got chewed up by the by the puffer fish. That's why I removed the sponge filter up out of this aquarium because they was over there chewing on, biting the sponge, tearing it up. I'm glad they were just tearing it up and not eating it because then they could have got you know you know impacted or whatever the case may be when they were trying to defecate, but. So let's go ahead and pull all of that out. There we go. It's quite a lot. All that. All that. And then, like I said, I'll also will get out the clamshells. It's quite a bit of sponge. That definitely needs to come out for sure all right and meanwhile while i'm doing this i'm allowing our fish to get used to the new temperature that he's in because i just poured more water not temperature but get used to the water chemistry of the other tank all right and the tank is looking a little cloudy because i did do a quick little wipe down of the glass you know, try to make it look nice. You know what I mean? I know a lot of people don't think that you should clean it before you record it because it's, it's uh, misrepresenting what your, what your aquarium look like. But you know what? When was the last time you had company and left the house dirty? Don't you clean it before you have company? All right then. Y'all company. So, got to clean up. Can't have y'all coming over in the house looking messy. Fish room looking messy. All right, let's go ahead and... uh. Move him out the way real quick. Let's get the rest of that sponge and get those clamshells. See all that sponge right there? Probably can't see it because you're so far back, but whatever. Take my word for it. It's there. There we go. See that? Yeah. All right, come on, a little more sponge. Come on, I see you right there, yeah. All right, now that I got the sponge, I wanna go ahead and get the shells now. There we go. Quite a few in here. 
And I like this net because the holes are big enough to allow the sand to go through. It don't just hold all the sand like some of these nets with the little holes, like the green ones, and you know, just a small, just a nest with the smaller holes. Watch this. Let me show you. You see that? All the sand falls right on out. So now all I have is just sponge and shells. So the tank is definitely going to look a little cloudier now, but in the end, it'll be, it'll look better without all the shells in here. All right. Get all that sand out. Still got some bigger ones, bigger pieces, but it's whatever. All right, now got some more shells on this side. Yep. Ah, this is definitely making the tank real messy. But that's all the shells right there. That's it. And all the sponge. So, take note of that. If you decide to run a sponge filter on your saltwater aquarium, make sure you don't have triggers in there or puffers because they're going to chew it up. And uh, I wouldn't recommend keeping your fish in a tank with a sponge filter for an extended period of time. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to like make that be the display tank. You know what I mean? You can have a display tank that's fresh water with, with a sponge filter, but I wouldn't do that with salt water. Quarantine, yes. And if that's all you have to get started, you can get away with it for some months. All right, let's take a look. All right, you see, got all the shells out. Looking good. That right there is not sponge, it's a little bit of cyano. Cyano comes because of the garage door, so no matter how much I combat it, it's a losing battle. But yeah, so far it looks good. Let's go ahead and uh, get our angel back into place. We're gonna throw a little bit more water in here. Yeah. So probably one more cup like I was saying, and then we could go ahead and move her on in. So uh, I'll be back in a few minutes when it's time to put the last cup and then we're going to get this fish into this 55 gallon. Be back in a second. All right, so let's go ahead and get the last little scoop, the last cup of water to solidify the water doubling in volume. A little bit more. That wasn't even a full cup. There we go. Now that right there, my friends, is the water doubling in volume. So now, all I gotta do is just move it into the new aquarium. So let's go ahead and grab this little fish. Come on, I got you. I know, I know, come on. Come on, come on. There we go. Just like that. Smooth transition, smooth operator right there, that's it. that already in a mess scribble okay check it out man check it out yeah 
Come on out. Come on out. Don't be hiding behind the rocks. There we go. Don't hide. Come on out. Curious. You know, it didn't really have any kind of rock work in that quarantine tank. So I'm knowing that uh, that this little guy or gal is curious. We haven't come up with a name for him. Matter of fact, I think we did. I think we came up with Angel. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Nonetheless, Angel is probably too simple. Got to figure out something else. Figure out when uh once that once this we uh once it develops some kind of personality and you know then we'll come up with something. But for now, it's just a beautiful queen angelfish. Looking happy. Adjusted real good. So that's why I said acclimate. No stress whatsoever. Get in here and already looking normal and all that. That's what you want. But I do need what I do need to do is probably feed it soon. I know it was hungry, but I don't know if I don't know if uh, I don't know if she'll eat. Probably just call her a female. Queen Angel, you know, I, I don't know if any I can't think of a of a male name that's gonna work well with that. But we'll see. Like I said, we'll see. If you got some names down below, drop them in the comments down below. Maybe you might have a better idea since I'm coming up empty. Um, and uh, maybe we'll use one of those. Nonetheless, this is a beautiful little inquisitive fish, isn't it? Such a cool fish. Man. So we do need to grab the emperor. There's a little trigger right there. Now they done met. But we do need to grab the emperor. So I'll probably pick up a juvenile emperor angel. Are you trying to pick on a little trigger? Are you trying to pick on my queen angel? There you go. You over there. Okay, I thought you were trying to thought you were trying to do something. And this little guy right here. Such a cool fish. Such a cool little fish. So if this fish was bigger, he'd be some trouble. But yeah, that's what I wanted to see. Next to each other. All right, no smoke. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I like to see. So it went perfect. I couldn't, I couldn't have imagined it going any better than this. This is what I wanted to see. Now we have all of our saltwater fish. I'm going to say all the saltwater fish. But we don't have any more fish in quarantine. And, uh... Finally got this little guy out of, uh, finally got this little girl up out of uh, quarantine. A little girl or a guy. Finally got this little fish up out of quarantine, so that's good. Alright, so uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video though. I really do. We did a little bit in here. Let's keep watching, let's keep watching. The little trigger is the only one that's have me a little concerned. Like I said, if he was bigger, he definitely would be a bully and be a problem. But I will keep an eye out. I will keep an eye out on this little fish right here because I know from experience that size don't matter. My little Joker, <laughs> clown trigger, ate the eyes out of my shark a few years back. As soon as I put him in. And obviously, the shark didn't make it. So, just because you have a small fish, especially a trigger fish, they got these little teeth. Just because you have a small trigger fish don't mean that they can't become problematic. Now, it's more important for me to keep... Oh, there we go. Yeah. I will go grab... You're acting like that you want to smoke, huh? So glad the angelfish is not worried or bothered by him at all. So yeah, acting like he went to smoke. That's kind of funny. It's kind of funny, but it's kind of not. We'll see what happens. So I'll let you guys know. Oh yeah, he ain't. Yeah, he's not tripping off of him. Like get up off me. That's what I'm talking about. Back him up off you. Back him up off you. Yeah. Anyway, clearly, I'm going to have some fun watching these fish. 
I have to watch him. But let's go ahead and wrap this on up for y'all. I know y'all ready to go. It's hot. Got to get this video out. Huh? <laughs> They're right next to each other. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. So, yeah, sometimes, like, that's what you got to be concerned about when you're adding new fish. If you have an aggressive fish, it's definitely possibility that, you know, it's going to be too much aggression where you're going to have to move one out or, you know, stretch yourself out. It's different things that you got to worry about. The key is to watch your fish, monitor your fish. Anytime you add a new fish into your aquarium, spend some time, watch, make sure you know what's going on. And I mean, really watch to make sure you know what's going on. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. Hope that you're inspired by something. If you're new here, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button. Follow along. Hit the notification bell so every time I upload. We got a lot going on in this fish room. We got a lot going on in that other fish room that I want to share with you all. I love sharing a hobby with y'all. So, uh, if y'all like this video, do me a favor one time. Like the video. It helps. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.